On the very night that he was betrayed, on the very night he sweat drops of blood in prayer, our Lord Jesus Christ prayed for all his followers and all who would become his followers. Central to his prayer was the unity of his followers. May they be one, was his cry. Again and again in his high priestly prayer of John chapter 17, Jesus prays to the Father that the church may be one. Unity does not just happen. Wholehearted prayer is vital. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given to me, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me. And the glory that you gave me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one in them, and you in me, that they may be made perfect in unity, and that the world may know that you have sent me, and has loved me, and has loved them as you love me. Churches across the world have chosen to ignore our Lord's Prayer and proudly advertise their disunity from church notice boards across the nations. Denominations divide up the family of God that Jesus died to unite. Such divisions of the body of Messiah quench the Holy Spirit and grieve the heart of a loving Heavenly Father. There is no scriptural justification for denominations. There is no record of any church in the New Testament making itself into a denomination. The only basis in the Bible for church membership is repentance and baptism. Acts chapter 2 verse 38. It has nothing at all to do with agreeing to a man-made constitution. Denominations are an addition to the Word of God. See Revelation 22 verse 18. They are neither desired nor required by God. They are man-made a work of the flesh. In Galatians 5 verse 19 to 21, the Holy Spirit lists the works of the flesh. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discords, jealousies, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit lists sex, divisions and factions alongside adultery, idolatry, witchcraft and murder. At the very first church business meeting in Acts chapter 15, the Holy Spirit refuses to burden believers with a list of conditions other than four essentials, none of which are mentioned in most church membership rules and regulations or constitutions. Read them in Acts chapter 15, verse 28 to 29. The apostles and elders in Jerusalem said, You will do well if you observe these four things. They saw extra conditions as a yoke which even they could not carry, Acts 15 verse 10. All Christians are already members one of another. All Christians are already in covenant membership with one another, sealed with the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. To add another condition to church membership is to say that the sacrifice of Messiah the precious blood of Jesus himself is not enough. It's an insult to the spirit of grace. We should never act as though any brother is not a partner with us in the work of the Lord, 
Jesus shed his blood for that brother and we dare not treat the blood of Jesus with contempt. It will bring us under severe judgment. See Hebrews 10 verse 29. To call oneself a church member is to imply that I have a part in the work in this place while other members of the congregation do not. It is the eye saying to the hand, I have no need of you. Or the head saying to the feet, I have no need of you. See 1 Corinthians 2 verse 1. It cripples the body of Messiah and it conde- and it's condemned in the word of God. Dividing Christians into us and them is sin. It leads to sickness and death. Read 1 Corinthians 11 verse 17, 1 Corinthians 18 verse 29 to 30. Sectarian divisions bring dishonour to the name of the Lord Jesus Messiah and are condemned by the Apostle Paul. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 10 to 13. Now I say this, that each of you says, I am Paul, or I am of Apollos, or I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 12. It is wrong to give allegiance to Apollos, Paul, or Cephas, or to Luther, Calvin, or Wesley, or other church leaders. It is wrong to live by the 39 Articles of the Church of England, or the policies of the Baptist Union, or the Assemblies of God rule book, or any other partnership covenant. These creeds are not the Word of God. They are man's interpretation of the Word, and Messiah is divided by them. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 13. Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptised in the name of Paul? No. No matter what good intentions a group of leaders have, they will at times fail to honour God. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3 verse 10. Man-made membership of any church does not increase commitment. Some members do not attend services or prayer meetings as regularly as non-members. For the good that members will do, they will fail to do. Romans 7 verse 19. The members will feel condemned by their failure. Romans 7 verse 24. And the spiritual life of the church will suffer as a result. We know that Jesus is building his church And he knows that building on division is a waste of time because a house divided against itself cannot stand. Matthew 12, verse 25. All denominations are formed as a result of divisions over doctrine. When the Bible is very clear that divisions between Christians are only ever permitted on moral grounds, Read the conditions, 1 Corinthians 5 verse 11. We should not reject those we don't agree with us, but in humility correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth, 2 Timothy 2 verse 25. Denominations were not founded on humility, but on pride, and that is like building on sand, says Jesus. Whereas scripture is quite clear, for no other foundation can anyone lay other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each man's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 11 Paul, the great apostle and teacher, appealed to the church in Corinth. I appeal to you, brothers, in the name of the Lord Jesus Messiah, 
that all of you agree with one another so that there may be no divisions among you and that you may be perfectly united in mind and thought. Perfectly united in mind and thought. That's God's will for his children and for his followers. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. The most important work that the Lord is doing in the world today is building his church. And we know that he who does all things well wants a glorious church without spot, blemish or wrinkle. We know that he is fully able to do this and that gates of hell will not prevail against such a church. As a master builder, the Lord can only build on a foundation of unity or else when the storm comes, the church would be washed away for a house divided against itself cannot cannot stand. Jesus is our righteousness, 2 Peter 1 verse 1, and also see Jeremiah 23 verse 6. The only man we should give allegiance to is the Lord Jesus Messiah. The only statements we should live by are the whole counsel of God, the word of God. The only strategy which we should have is that given us by the Holy Spirit. The only structure we should have is that which is built by Jesus, Matthew 16, verse 18. The Lord Jesus Messiah said, I will build my church, Matthew 16, verse 18. Here is a simple thing, list of things that church leaders could do to remove some of the man-made barriers to unity in their own church. 1. Repent of all forms of non-biblically based division. Remove all barriers to real unity that Christ prayed for and pray along the lines of John chapter 17. Remove the non-biblical divisive names that speak disunity from church notice boards and literature across the nation. Stop having formal membership and accept anyone who confesses Jesus as Lord as a brother in Messiah. Get serious about the biblical grounds for disfellowshipping someone. Read 1 Corinthians 5. We've been able to do this even though we have not had formal membership. Preach and teach Bible-based unity and expose the barriers that Christian you sinfully justify. Join with everyone who wants to be an answer to our Lord's Prayer of John chapter 17 and pray. And then expect the Holy Spirit to move in the church. Amen.